Good morning, sir. Good morning, Professor Pulaya. Uh, how are you, sir? sir? Hey, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. After a long time. <laughs> yeah, after a long time, yes. So, uh, uh, wonderful. Right. Very good. So, how long will we start starting? Okay. Okay. Yeah, good morning, Professor Kothari. Good morning, sir. This is uh, Nikhil Zaveri, Vice Chancellor of GSA. Oh, nice to see you. And uh, yeah, I heard about yeah. you. Professor Pulaya, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, good yeah, morning. Sir. Dr. Avi, Avi Hailan from Israel. Welcome and good oh, morning. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Professor Rekha Warrior, also. I... Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir. So, Dr. Sudhir, when are we starting now? Minutes. Sir, uh, we will be starting within two minutes, sir. Okay, fine. Dr. Mafatlal has done a great job bringing so many people together. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Participants are joining, it looks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The number is increasing. Yeah. Why, sir? Sir, why, sir? Hello, are you yeah. able to hear me? Yes, yes, please. So, sir, shall we start, sir? Yes, 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 Dr. Sudhir, please. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning and thank you for joining us at the three-day international webinar series on plant tissue culture and biotechnology. Current Trends and Future Perspectives, which is sponsored by Gujarat State Biotechnology Mission, DST. Respected Provost of GSFC University, Dr. Nikhil Javeri, Director Administration, Shri Ramesh Panchal, Director Campus, Shri Atul Dholakia, our eminent speakers, faculty members, researchers, participants from industries, and all our student participants, I, Dr. Ankit Sudhir, Assistant Professor, GSFC University, extend a very warm and cordial welcome to our international webinar series. 
This is the first international webinar series in the history of our School of Science, GSFC University, and it is our privilege to host this event where experts from the institutes of national and international repute are coming together on one platform to deliberate on plant tissue culture and biotechnology. So let me brief you about our university. GSFC University is established under Gujarat Private University Act uh, as a corporate social responsibility by an industry giant, Gujarat State Fertilizer and Chemicals Limited. It's an Indian manufacturer of fertilizers and industrial chemicals founded in the year 1962. The company has institutionalized its expertise in creating GSFC University to offer education, training, skill development, and research in engineering, science, and management sector. GSFC University follows a unique medical, uh, medical college model for imparting practical hands-on experience in all its streams. Our educational abode dwells on the philosophy of buddhi gyanen shudhyanti, which means purification of mind and intellect through knowledge, which is vital to human life as it strengthens the path of success towards perfection. The vision of our university is to strive for the best compact boutique institution with a futuristic approach, encouraging student-centric uh, culture and sharpened focus on developing industry-ready and employable students with all-round development. And our mission is to establish an institution which promotes creativity and innovation, develop unique quality standards for academic excellence and pedagogical innovations, remain agile through learning ecosystem with flexible processes and systems, and holistic growth for industry readiness. So now I request our IT team to play our university video. The ideal state, industrial development model, infrastructure and energy ready state. The city of Vadodara, the cultural capital of the state is also an important educational and industrial hub which is strategically located. The Gujarat State Fertilizers and Chemicals Limited GSFC is a joint sector public limited company promoted by the government of Gujarat and a jewel in the industrial crown of the state. GSFC, manufacturer and supplier of leading industrial chemicals, fertilizers and agro products. A multi-location, multi-plant, multi-services company. Preferred choice to host to Trintan Shibir. A promoter of many companies. Delivering unparalleled value. Powering growth in a greener way. GSFC University established by GSFC in 2014 as a CSR initiative through GSFC Education Society. GSFC University is a pioneer in educating youth through intensive industrial internships. University Management Vision GSFC University is a paradigm shift in the Indian higher education. We are a unique educational hub and our aim is to make our students industry ready. The university is steered by the governing body, Board of Management, Academic Council and Board of Studies comprising industrialists, academicians and other experts. GSFC University is envisaged to be a compact and boutique university with course curriculum designed to meet with the requirements of industries by following the medical college model to impart hands-on training for engineering, science, management and fire and safety. Supported by 22 world-class manufacturing plants of GSFC located in close vicinity and having partnership with more than 90 industries in and around Vadodara. Offering industrial internships and training after every semester. Providing choice-based credit system. Laying the foundation of incubation and innovation center. To prepare future leaders, we have created the GSFC University Incubation Innovation Technology Applied Research Center, also known as GITAR. 
It is a cross-disciplinary applied research center to deliver innovative solutions to the industries. It will also act as an incubation center for novel ideas in technology and other areas of business. Of faculties selected based on rigorous process including student feedback, 30% of teaching is imparted by industrial faculties. Foundational course at GSFC University ensures students holistic development which gives them a further edge to excel in the modern competitive market. Various competitions, community services, adventure trips, annual health checkup, sports and participative management help students in their all-round development. GSFC University helps me in staying abreast with an education that the modern industries demand. Moreover, a participatory management style encourages us to be a part of important teams that manage the hostel, cafeteria, placements and other important events on the campus. Our campus is unique in many ways too. The lush green environment stimulates learning. The silent guardians, the inhabitants of GSFC Township make our campus totally safe and secured for all, particularly for girls and female faculties. GSFC University's compact, contemporary, cutting-edge, customized and collaboration or 5C course curriculum is designed to match the dynamic industry demands. Periodical reviews are also organized to plan the future curriculum and pedagogy. Our Wi-Fi enabled digital campus and hostels, CCTV surveillance, LAN and advanced audio video facilities in all classrooms make learning contemporary, immersive and engaging. Within five years of its existence, the university has achieved impressive record of admissions. We have introduced new undergraduate courses in computer science and engineering, specialization in data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning, internet of things and automation, fire and environment, health and safety. Postgraduate courses in Organic Chemistry, Analytical Chemistry and Biotechnology and doctoral programs in Chemistry and Biotechnology. With holistic approach towards industry readiness, employable students, GSFC University is developing itself into a vital national asset. A comprehensive ecosystem for students, university and industry aimed at a situation of win-win-win. Thank you very much, IT team, for playing that video. Now, let me take this pleasure of introducing Professor Dr. Nikhil Zaveri, the Provost of GSFC University. Dr. Nikhil Javeri is a visionary leader and also a chartered accountant and an alumnus of Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. He is known for his dynamic leadership provided to a very prestigious institute, SEMCOM, in the capacity of director and principal. He has also worked as director general of Charutar Vidya Mandal, an organization for education with 30,000 students, 2,000 teachers, and more than 250 UGPG uh, and research programs. He also had the privilege of becoming an officiating vice chancellor of Sadar Patel University. He is MCOM with gold medal, uh, chartered accountant and PhD. He is also a recipient of many awards. He holds more than 25 years of experience in the field of management and mentored many PhD scholars. He uh, helps teacher to inculcate the best practices in education and an inspiration to all teachers. I hereby request Professor Dr. Nikhil Zaveri, Provost GSFC University to address our participants. Thank you, <clears throat> Dr. Sudhir. It gives me immense pleasure to be here in the inaugural session of this international webinar. So at the outset, uh, let me congratulate the entire team of School of Science at GSFC University. I really congratulate uh, the Associate Dean, Dr. Santosh Kumar, and his other team members 
Dr. Ankit Sudhir and Dr. Mafatlal and other professors of biotechnology for making this a grand success. I'm sure these three days will be very meaningful and the topic that you have, or the theme that you have chosen, the plant tissue culture and biotechnology, the emerging trends. I'm sure in three days time, the various experts in this webinar would throw a new light on this particular topic. We'll come out with new ideas, new suggestions, and probably we will be able to explore new areas of research in the area of biotechnology. Well, it is uh, the theme is plant tissue culture, but you know I firmly believe that the culture of curiosity at every university, in every institution, will definitely inspire, encourage, and motivate the teachers and the students to explore new ideas, new problems, solutions, and the methodology of approaching the issue, the circumstances, all this put together will give a new body of knowledge. And I'm sure that such new knowledge will be helpful to the community at large. Well, I acknowledge the presence of, and I welcome Professor Kothari, <clears throat> Professor Puleya, Professor Avi from Israel, Professor Smita, Sumita and all other dignitaries who have been here. I also welcome all the participants from various countries and I'm very happy to learn that around 1,200 have registered for this webinar and we have participants from 40 countries around the world. So in true sense, this is an international webinar and I'm sure that GSFC University is providing a platform this time and it will continue to provide this platform in future. I thank all the speakers and all the panelists for spending a valuable time. I also take this opportunity to thank the Gujarat State Biotechnology Mission for sponsoring this webinar. I also acknowledge the presence of my colleagues over here, Mr. Panchal, who is a director, administration and registrar of the university, Mr. Dorakia, who is a campus director of the university, and all other my colleagues, my students, I'm very happy and I wish you all the best for this three day meaningful and fruitful webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir, for your uh, kind words. So, sir, with your permission, I would like to request our today's speakers and guests uh, to uh, launch our new programs of School of Science, GSFC University. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. So I would request now IT team to play the video. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kirtan Dave, Assistant Professor, GSFC University. Our university launching a two new courses this year, BSc Microbiology and MSc Industrial Microbiology, in which students will get the basic foundations subjects of microbiology along with applications and recent developments. Students will also get the practical knowledge by hands-on training and industrial internship at the end of each semester. The course is designed in looking into the recent demand of the industrial career which will help the students to make the career in R&D and academic institute as well as industry. So we welcome young brains to join this program and the details of these programs are available on our website. Thank you. Thank you, IT team, for playing this video. Now, I would request Dr. Mafatlal Kher, Assistant Professor, School of Science, GSFC University, to brief us about this webinar series. Good morning, everyone. And on behalf of GSFC University, I heartily welcome 
all the speakers participants and uh, our professors uh, our senior professors our provost sir uh, uh, rekha madam sumita madam uh, vi hi sir ashwini kumar sir bulaya sir uh, kothari sir and uh, all my uh, colleagues <clears throat> so this webinar is all about <clears throat> application of plant tissue culture and biotechnology here uh, we have uh, distinguished speakers from all around world and they are <clears throat> stalwart in plant tissue culture and biotechnology so uh, all the audience will enjoy the fragrance of plant tissue culture in coming sessions so i once again i welcome you all of welcome all of you uh, on this auspicious occasion uh, thank you sir thanks a lot uh, dr mafatlal kher so with this now i would like to introduce uh, our today's moderator of the session dr rekha warrior she works at the plant biotechnology division institute of For forest genetics and tree, tree breeding coimbatore she is currently serving as the head of the plant tissue culture group some of her major activities include tissue culture facility for commercial production of plants and in vitro production of secondary metabolites through transformation genetic improvement of medicinal trees stress physiology working on the concept of breeding without breeding for early prediction of orchid gains and participation in extension and training programs for foresters also uh, she helps uh, the uh, training in the training of research staff students and oh. she, she is associated with various forestry agencies she had opportunities to work in moist deciduous and evergreen ecosystems in the tropics dr rekha has been a principal investigator in 20 research projects and has to her credit 70 research papers and 15 book chapters presently she is the assistant national country coordinator of the asia pacific forest genetic resources program she is also a member of western ghats plant group of the species survival commission of the icu iucn and liaison to the central secretariat of the india chapter of istf that is international society of tropical foresters so i welcome dr rekha warrior and i would request you to introduce our first speaker of the day thank you thank you dr ankit sudhir am i audible yes ma'am you are audible yes so uh, this is a very welcome move by the gfsc university in such a time in this pandemic where the children would be so much used to the professors alone and they get this opportunity to meet people from all over the world experts from all over the world this is one rare opportunity and i congratulate the university for providing this excellent opportunity for your students this itself shows how uh, forthcoming the organization is in trying to expose the children to so much of varied uh, uh, opportunities available throughout the world so coming to the duty that has been given to me uh, the i would be introducing the opening batsman as we would call uh, professor s l kothari uh, and i think this is a this is again one of the best things that the university has done wherein we have taken selected him as the opening batsman for this international webinar which is again the first of its kind of your university so i go ahead with my uh, introducing sir thank you so much for this privilege also so uh, though he does not need such a detailed uh, description everybody knows him in this field still since i have been given this honor i do it with great pride professor sl kothari is the distinguished professor of biotechnology presently the vice president at the amity university in rajasthan jaipur before coming to this position he has been holding various positions in the university of rajasthan jaipur for 35 years in various capacities starting from the assistant professor till becoming the dean of the faculty of science and also a syndicate member he completed his phd from the university of rajasthan in 1984 after which he was awarded the fulbright fellowship of the us government to work at the university of illinois 
and his work on cell fusion and recombination in mitochondrial genome has been regarded as one of the pioneering works in his field. He has a very long-standing academic and research career. He has been awarded various fellowships along with the Common Commonwealth Academic Staff Fellowship by the UGC and the Association of Commonwealth Universities. He has also been awarded the prestigious Rockefeller Biotechnology Career Professor. A fellowship to work with a group of Professor E.C. Cocking, FRS, at the Nottingham University, UK. Sir has been elected a fellow of two National Science Academies. One is the National Science Academy of India. Another is the National Science Academy of Agricultural Sciences. Generally, it is only one. Sir has the credit for two National Science Academy awards. One is for plant sciences and the other is for his contribution in agricultural biotechnology. He has also been a visiting professor at the University of, at the University of Tsukuba, Japan and Leibniz University of Institute of Plant Genetics and Crop Plant Research in Germany and also RMIT University, Melbourne, Australia. He has numerous awards to his credit. One of those which is worth mentioning here is the Professor Hiralal Chakravarti Award, which was given to him by the Prime Minister in 1994 at the Indian Science Congress. He has contributed to the fields of GM technology, nanobiotechnology, and molecular plant biodiversity. He has various international journals, to, papers to his credit in international journals. He has more than 5,200 citations with a very high H index of 37. He has been invited to several talks, lectures. He has chaired several technical sessions. He has delivered the FC Stewart Memorial Lecture and Professor P. Maheshwari Memorial Lectures. He has worked in various countries like the US, UK, Australia, the Netherlands, Japan, China, and Dubai. He, during his entire tenure, has completed 20 research projects. He has guided 55 doctoral students and postdoctoral students. He is also a very member of various national committees with his vast expanse of experience in 41 years of academic and administrative experience. Based on this, the Amity University Rajasthan appointed him after his superannuation to work in various capacities, not just one, which clearly indicates his profile. He is the Dean, the Director, Pro-President, Vice-President, and a Distinguished Professor at the Amity University. He is also an excellent academic administrator and an institution builder, an ardent supporter of creating positivity for the talent to grow, and he believes in complete freedom to inquisitiveness. Having such a distinguished professor here with us to start our international webinar series, I am sure this webinar series is going to uh, move leaps and bounds in future also, and I look forward to hearing from Sir. Sir, the floor is yours, sir. You have been given one hour to make your presentation. I invite you to give your talk, the maiden talk in this series, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rekha, Warriors. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm so grateful to you for such an elaborate introduction uh, about me. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I also thank uh, Dr. Mafatlal Khe for inviting me to this international webinar and making my presentation, first of all. I thank uh, Professor Nikhil Zaveri, uh, who is the Vice Chancellor of GSFC University. And this university has made such tremendous progress in a short time for which I compliment him. Ramesh Panchal, Registrar of the University, Atul Dholakia, Campus Director, Dr. Ankit, uh, who is conducting this webinar series uh, and the participants from all over the world and students, faculty who are attending this international webinar series. And the first series is on plant tissue culture and biotechnology, current trends and future perspectives. Very well uh, chosen topic of plant tissue culture and biotechnology. Plant tissue culture has made tremendous progress and has contributed immensely to agricultural biotechnology in the past 20 years. While tissue culture started long back, but the contributions by the plant tissue culture people 
have been realized in the agricultural biotechnology field in the last more than 25 years. For this webinar series, I have chosen the topic from cellular totipotency to genetic manipulation of plant cells, some deeper insight and an overview. I should give an overview of the plant tissue culture in this webinar series because it is being attended by very large number of students. And for them, knowing about various developments in plant tissue culture uh, will be quite encouraging and very interesting for them. So obviously, when I say deeper insight from cellular totipotency to genetic manipulation, there is, it implies historical account also. So I will take some five, 10 minutes of my initial uh, time to explain to you the development which took place in this field leading to genetic manipulation of the plants. As the biology students would know, that the, there is continuity of the cells. And the cell theory, which was proposed by Sheldon Swan in 1838 and 89, mentions that every structural element of a plant is an aggregate of fully individualized, independent, separate beings that is called cells. These cells were first visualized in 1665 by Robert Hooke, who cut a slice of the cork tissue and saw various cells there. And he called them as cells. Later on, they were recognized as the cells of all the plants and all the animals. Schwann in 1839 mentioned about elementary parts of all tissues and he mentioned that they are all form of cells. And there is one universal principle of development for the elementary parts of organisms. And this principle is in the formation of cells. Sheldon and Schwann, they are trying to emphasize that every living organism, be it plant or animal, they are all made up of cells. Later, Rudolf Warshow in 1858, show that cells are formed through season of pre-existing cells. Varsho aphorism, omnis cellula a cellula, every cell from a pre-existing cell became the guiding principle of the theory of tissue formation. Even at that time, the mechanism of nuclear division was not known, but Rudolf Virchow mentions that every cell comes from pre-existing cell. But what does, where the first cell comes from is not yet known. And this is a very big challenge for the scientist to discover how the elementary first cell came on Earth. Can we recreate that situation where from the first cell may have come on this Earth? After the first cell has come, there is no problem. The cells will come from pre-existing cells. And tissues will be formed from these cells. And once the tissues are formed and the whole organisms, there are no problems. So having known about the cell theory, this is a unifying concept. If this concept unifies the essence of life that the perpetuation of life is through cellular divisions. The science and art of plant tissue culture developed later on. And the idea of plant tissue culture can be traced back to Heberland. Gottlieb Heberland, who in 1902 published a paper which mentions about culturing the isolated plant cells taken from leaf tissue with chloroplast in them. Various plants, tissues, the cells he, he cultured from Icornia, Pulmonaria, 
to tradescantia in nobs solution at that time tissue culture media was not available and nobs solution was the only available medium with nutrients and in those nutrients gottlieb heberlet cultured the isolated cells in hanging droplets in those hanging droplets he did not see any division although he saw the enlargement of cells he was expecting divisions but he could not get it and today we can realize that he did not succeed because of two major reasons one was that he took mature cells and those two from the leaf tissue it is even today very difficult to culture the mature cells taken from the leaf tissue and get any cultures any viable and perpetuating cultures so there he was uh, his choice was not good and he also used the medium nob solution and nob solution is not good enough for the cellular division but nevertheless he at that time had an idea and he said that i am not making a too bold a prediction if i point to the possibility that in this way one should successfully cultivate artificial embryos from vegetative cells he predicted that from vegetative cells are capable of making embryos and if they are capable of making embryos then they are capable of making the full plants and his research was published by the title experiments on the culture of isolated plant cell in vienna academy of science in berlin on 6 february 1902 he presented his work and thus founded the basis for plant tissue culture to develop later on in the next 40 50 years पार्टिसिपेंट्स में प्लीज स्विच ऑफ देयर ऑडियो सो गॉटलीप हेबरलैंड वॉज द फर्स्ट टू इमेजिन अबाउट टोटी पोटेंसी ऑफ प्लांट सेल्स and after his assumption 55 years later stewart and reinard in carrot tissue they developed somatic embryos historically speaking uh, this is not exact timeline but i have selected few discoveries which led to the development of the tissue culture as it stands today tomato roots were cultured by white in 1934 and those root tips grew indefinitely gothrey in 1934 used iaa and he cultured carrot callus tissue tobacco and carrot callus tissue nobeco used cambial tissue and he also could grow them for some time and he used iaa ball in 1946 cultured shoot tips and meristems but real plant tissue culture was started in 43 by white he wrote a book on plant tissue culture which was published in 1943 and became a classical text on plant tissue culture later on hormonal control of morphogenesis auxins and cytokinins were discovered and skug and miller gave the concept of hormonal control of morphogenesis which i tell you in some detail later on and first somatic embryogenesis was reported by stewart and reinard the details of which i will mention soon tissue culture medium and rich tissue culture medium was developed by murashige and skug in 1962 1962 and that medium became the most popular medium for plant tissue culture which is used by the researchers after the discovery and thousands and thousands of papers have been published which 
uses and murashkir's to india morel gave the concept of micro propagation in virus free plants in 1960 and his concept of virus free plants received lot of attention from the tissue culture industry and uh, plants have been grown in plant tissue culture for industrial applications enzymatic isolation of plant protoplast was developed by professor coking in 1960 he isolated protoplast from tomato root tips using the cellulase enzyme isolated from myrothecium verrucaria i worked in his laboratory for several years in nottingham from 1989 to 96 and sometime i asked professor cocking that how would you do how have you discovered protoplast so he said that i was not aiming to isolate protoplast and he was aiming to separate cells for some physiological and biochemical experiments and when everything else failed he said that he tried this uh, cellulase which he had placed in his freezer at the lower most part and from there he took the uh, cellulase enzyme and he could isolate protoplast which were the concept was published in nature in 1960 and thereafter protoplast became the most useful material for the Uh, experimental plant biologist uh, for the next many many years indian scientists professor sipra guha mukherjee and professor satish maheshwari for the first time isolated uh, the androgenic haploids they discovered androgenic haploids from the dhatura anoxia plants commercial micro propagation per se was started by murashige in 1974 and somatic hybrids by fusing the protoplast were reported in 83 by kenneth giles and many more people then worked on protoplast fusion uh, including myself i first published somatic hybrids in 1984 and got uh, the somatic hybrid plants with recombination in the mitochondrial genome somaclonal variations larkin and scowcroft in 1981 Uh, they gave the concept of some clonal variations then came the major discovery in 83 by three independent scientists working in different places chilton in usa mary dale chilton shilpe root in holland in the, the netherlands and jeff shell in belgium in 1983 who developed the technique for agrobacterium mediated genetic transformation protoplast for direct gene transfer was developed at the same time during the same time by pasjoweski potricus from devi in nottingham hopman in arbana roads all these people worked for direct gene transfer using protoplast and at that very time john sanford developed the particle gun for direct gene transfer into the intact tissue of the plants and secondary metabolites from plant tissue culture was also an important discovery made by staba and call in 65 so all these areas then later on developed into commercial you know, micro propagation commercial production of the secondary metabolites production of genetically transformed plants which have become so common uh, nowadays the somatic embryogenesis was discovered by stewart and reinard separately independently but the first evidence for totipotency of the plant cell came from wasil bimla wasil and hildebrand in 1965 uh, they isolated single cells and the single cell was cultured and that developed into complete plant complete embryo giving the first evidence for single cell origin and totipotency of the plant cell single plant cell now i will uh, come to cellular totipotency in plants some uh, deeper insight and some historical uh, portions cellular totipotency the concept means the every cell of the plant is totipotent in terms of developing into a complete plant 
and that is the basis for plant tissue culture. Every cell is totipotent, theoretically speaking, but not all cells are really totipotent. Some have reached to a level of maturity where from the de-differentiation from those cells is not possible and totipotency may not be attained from such cells. But genetically speaking, every cell is a product of the zygotic cell and zygotic cell is totipotent and zygote is dividing mitotically to make the whole plant. So every plant cell is theoretically or genetically speaking is totipotent. So is also the case with animal cells, but we may not realize the totipotency uh, from all the cells. The cellular, uh, the somatic embryogenesis from the single cells was achieved or from the group of cells was achieved by Reinhardt and Stewart. I will mention about the, about the work of Stewart for, for uh, just an example, how Stewart and how much work has been done by Stewart. Professor Frederick Campion Stewart, he was born in London in 1904, died in America in 1993, and uh, he was a first class BSc honors degree from Leeds University in chemistry. He did his PhD in botany. I'm telling his, about his career for the students to know how much a person can achieve in his lifetime, how much a single individual can do. He was a demonstrator in Leeds University from 26 to 27, Rockefeller Fellow at Cornell University. Then he, he was married in 29, assistant lecturer in Leeds University for four years. Then he was a Rockefeller Foundation Fellow for two years in Hoglands Laboratory, reader in botany at Brickback College London, director of aircraft equipment for five years during the World War II. He was professor and chair of botany at Rochester, New York for four years from 46 to 50. Then Alexander professor at Cornell University where he served till 1973. He was fellow of American Academy of Arts and Sciences and fellow of Royal Society also. Honorary DSC degree was conferred upon him by University of Delhi. And he was C.V. Raman lecturer at University of Madras. He had such Indian links. And to mention, one of his first PhD student was Professor H. E. Street. He was a pioneer in plant tissue culture later on. So such is the brilliant career of Stewart, who discovered somatic embryogenesis from carrot uh, phloem tissue. He was a great researcher. He published 200 papers in his lifetime and written many books. His treatise on plant physiology volumes one to 10 published between 59 to 91. They were published by academic press. He wrote a wonderful book on plant physiology in organic nutrition of plants in 63. Plants at work, a summary of plant physiology in 64 about plants, Topics in Plant Biology, 1966. Growth and Organization, Plant Structure Development, Metabolism, Physiology is another book written by him in 68. Plants, Chemicals and Growth. It was a very wonderful book in 71. And he published 200 research papers. Such is the illustrious oh, career of the person who, who discovered somatic embryogenesis in Karen. Photograph, you check my photograph. This is how somatic embryogenesis experiment to explain totipotency in carrot was conducted. He isolated tissues from the carrot, phloem tissues, and he cultured them, got a cell, cell suspension culture. He took root apices and cell divisions leading to formation of cell clumping. And in the presence of 2,4-D, those cell clumps differentiated into somatic embryos and various stages of somatic embryos, globular, triangular, heart shaped and elongated embryos were seen by him and these embryos germinated to make full plants. Thus, from 
cell groups in suspension culture he could demonstrate development of somatic embryos and formation of complete plants thereby establishing the totipotency of plant cells somatic embryogenesis is similar to zygotic embryogenesis somatic embryos zygotic embryos develop from zygote few divisions in the zygote apical upper portion of the zygote and lower portion forms the suspensor and the heart and torpedo shape embryos are formed the zygote actic embryos then expand and then maturation takes place through desiccation and then they undergo dormancy before they can germinate while the somatic embryos develop from callus tissue or any single isolated plant cell they undergo the same phases of globular and heart shaped embryo formation and then torpedo embryo and complete plant death and regeneration of whole plants the difference between somatic and zygotic embryos lies in the fact that often the somatic embryos will not have any suspensor sometimes they do have when they are for, are formed from the callus tissue but often the suspensor is missing and desiccation phase is not there in the somatic embryos and the somatic embryos do not undergo any dormancy straight away they can germinate in addition to that somatic embryos and zygotic embryos differ in their size also somatic embryos often are little bigger than the zygotic embryos so students can note these differences in the somatic and zygotic embryos the somatic embryos can originate from single cell or they can originate from multicellular they can originate from several cells in this diagram uh, it has been shown that somatic embryos can arise from single cell which divide and make the globular and elongated embryos single multicellular origin several epidermal cells can give rise to the embryo and and these these several cells can be from one layer or two layers and the embryos could be multicellular in origin also but most often the uh, somatic embryos are of unicellular origin this is a leaf tissue showing direct somatic embryogenesis in a section you can see the somatic embryos having very loose attachment with the parent tissue and in the indirect somatic embryogenesis first the callus formation is there and after the callus formation somatic embryos arise indirectly from the callus tissue various developmental stages of somatic embryos are similar to zygotic embryos two cells four cells and later on globular embryos heart shaped embryos and then the uh, the cortical notch is produced and the cotyledonary notch and the so shoot apical meristem and two apical meristem develop and somatic embryos reach to maturity somatic embryogenesis sometimes people wanted to have synchronization in somatic embryogenesis so the cells which are growing in the liquid uh, suspension cultures they were filtered and through percol and ficol gradient centrifugation the embryogenic cells were separated and embryogenic cells then developed into large number of embryos simultaneously synchronously then comes the somatic embryogenesis or uh, embryogenesis from the microspore embryogenesis i will not we you cannot call them somatic embryogenesis that is microspore embryogenesis which was developed by guha and maishuri in 1964 in datura we also worked on datura and so somatic embryogenesis from the microspores the unicellular microspores were cultured anthers were cultured with the unicellular microspores which divided and formed globular embryos these globular embryos then made elongated embryos and these were haploid embryos these haploid embryos were further cultured in the callus form and from those callus suspension cultures were raised and suspension cultures then again made large number of haploid embryos in liquid cultures thereby we can we could increase the number of embryos uh, many fold so uh, haploid embryos many fold and these haploid embryos 
can then make complete haploid. Haploid plants have also been made from the Brassica uh, microspores, isolated microspores. And these isolated microspores showed high degree of synchrony and large number of microspores develop into microspore embryos. These are haploid plants. A lot of work since has been done on the embryogenesis from microspores and anthers. Somatic embryos developed in carrot or other plants have can have indirect origin or direct origin. When direct somatic embryogenesis takes place, the somatic cell is reprogrammed for making totipotent cell. And this totipotent cell then can make somatic embryo. Somatic cells are reprogrammed to make embryogenic callus also. And this embryogenic callus then can form somatic embryo indirectly from a single cell or large group of cells. This, this uh, diagram uh, has been uh, made to make the presentation about the direct and uh, indirect and direct somatic ambiguities. A lot of molecular work has been done about understanding the totipotency of plant cells. Here you can see the cellular reprogramming for somatic embryogenesis. On the left side, the epigenetic factors have been mentioned. And on the right side, transcriptional factors are mentioned. These transcription factors, LEC2, BBM, LEC1, these are responsible for converting the totipotent cell into somatic embryo. And these genes, LEC1, LEC2, BBM, if they are overexpressed, then somatic embryogenesis occurs. While these AGL15, AB13, FUS3, these transcription factors, they keep the somatic conversion of the cell, totipotent cell into somatic embryo. They, they, they delay. And auxin is required for the totipotent cell to express into somatic embryogenesis. Various epigenetic factors which are present in the somatic cell, such as PRC1, PKL, PRC2, HDAC, these epigenetic factors do not allow the somatic cell to undergo totipotency. And somatic cell remains somatic cell if these epigenetic factors are there. But in the presence of auxin, these transcription factors express, and this expression of these transcription factors make the, toti, uh, the somatic cell into a, a totipotent cell, which then makes somatic cell. These are the full forms of the various transcription factors are PRC1, PRC2, polycom, repressive complex 2, histone B acetylase, leafy cotyledon, and various factors. The interaction of these transcription factors and epigenetic factors leads to uh, somatic embryogenesis. Somatic embryogenesis is one way to get tissue cultures and plant regeneration. Organogenesis is second method of making the complete plants. And organogenesis can occur from various tissues of the plant. And the famous experiment by Skug and Miller, which tells about the interaction between cytokinin and auxin, leading to the formation of callus or roots or uh, shoots. Uh, this famous experiment was done, uh, reported by Skug and Miller in 1957, explained culture on zero cytokinin and high auxin can make roots. And if the oxygen level is not high enough, then they can make small uh, portion of callus, small amounts of callus. If cytokinin concentration rises, then the explant can make shoots, shoot buds. And if the concentration of oxygen is also there with a high cytokinin concentration, 
then callus formation will occur. So in the in the middle, where high amount of auxin is there and mediocre amount of cytokinin, callus formation will be there. And if this this ratio of auxin to cytokinin determines the fate of the tissue in general, and this made the uh, founding principle for later tissue culture studies to differentiate uh, plants from cultured tissues. On this side, axillary bud culture has been shown and these axillary buds can proliferate in tissue cultures and from one axillary bud, 10 shoot buds can be produced and these 10 shoot buds then again can have axillary buds which can be cultured and proliferated to make plants or shoots. And thus, within a period of six months, if one axillary bud makes 10 shoot, 10 egg buds, then about 10 to the power six, 10 lakh plants can be produced from one axillary bud. But during this process, a lot of mutations can occur, some mutations can occur and the regeneration potential may be lost. Plants can also come from the leaf explant or any other explant through callus formation. And this callus can then develop into shoot and root. Plants can adventitiously come from cultured tissues such as leaf or stem and adventitiously shoots can be produced or adventitiously roots can be produced. So the, this, this picture is showing about formation of uh, various types of organs and somatic embryos from cultured tissue. Leaf tissue can directly give rise to somatic embryo, which is which may be considered, which is direct somatic embryogenesis, and it is called adventitious somatic embryo. The adventitiously produced somatic embryos can produce secondary somatic embryos, and tertiary somatic embryos. Leaf tissue from leaf tissue, single somatic cell can be isolated that can also make complete embryo and complete plant, going through various stages of embryogenesis hard torpedo and elongated embryos and the complete plant. Leaf tissue can also make callus tissue and from the callus in the presence of cytokinins, shoot buds can be developed. And this is indirect organogenesis. In the presence of auxins, this callus can make roots. And this callus in the presence of 2,4-D can also make embryos, somatic embryos, secondary and tertiary somatic embryos. So this is a generalized picture of formation of somatic embryos and shoot buds and roots. If you are culturing the leaf tissue and callus is formed, then from this callus, shoot buds can also come. But from this callus, if root has developed before the production of shoot bud, then the shoot buds will never differentiate. But from the shoot buds, roots can develop. Then, uh, uh, comes the protoplast culture. Protoplast can be isolated from the suspended cells, from the leaf tissue or from uh, any part of the plant. Here, the protoplast which has been isolated from the suspension culture of rice has been shown. The suspended isolated protoplasts are spherical. All the protoplasts, when they have been isolated, uh, the cell wall has been removed. If they are placed in a slightly hypertonic or isotonic solution, they become spherical because now they are bound by plasma membrane, which is of uniform size all around and inside turgidity in the, in the, in the cell set makes them spherical, completely spherical. Protoplast have the capacity to divide. You can see the division in the protoplast and these dividing protoplast can form microcali and these microcali can then be isolated, separated, and put into the regeneration medium uh, where they can form the complete plants. Then I come to the development of genetic manipulation and formation of genetically modified transgenic plants. Transgenic plants are made for desired gene transfer into the plant for higher yield, improved quality, or disease or pest resistance, abiotic stress management. These are the reasons for which transgenic plants 
are made. Because there are challenges in the agriculture in this century, crop yield needs to be increased beyond the 20th century green revolution. Resources required for agriculture have to be reduced. Crops to be developed for resistance against drought, heat, cold, and other stresses. And this is possible through plant breeding and also through the genetic manipulation. Plant, the plant improvement through plant breeding has reached a plateau and no more variations are available which can make any further growth or any further advance in the improvement of crop plants. So plant breeding has to take the help from transgenic breeding and from there, the improved plants can be produced. Transgenic plants contain genetic constructs from any source. And this technology, transgenic technology, allow movement of genes across species barriers. This is the key point of transgenic plants. While hybridization draw upon the germplasm primary and secondary, while transgenic plants can take the germplasm from tertiary gene pool also. Tertiary gene pool is any DNA sequence from any source. Thereby, through genetic transformation, the characters can be obtained from any plant material for improving the crop plants, any animal material, microbes, even viruses. Therefore, the transgenic technology is an extension of traditional plant breeding in terms of genetic variations and basic steps of plant breeding are followed. Generate variation and then select. While gene transfer technology is more precise, transgenic plants have been developed in all the major crop plants such as maize, soybean, cotton, canola, sugar beet, alfalfa, papaya, squash. Every plant has been genetically modified. And if not, then it can be modified now if required. We have also worked on transgenic rice, millets, and barley. Transgenic tomato and transgenic cotton shown here look similar to the transgenic uh, normal plants, but they have additional features whereby Tomatoes will have delayed ripening genes. It will cause delay in ripening and the Bt gene introduced in cotton protects them from insects. Bt brinjal have also been developed here. Shown here with Cry1AC gene, the fruit borer cannot infect the shoot in the, in the, in the fruit and fruits remain healthy. While if the Cry1 AC gene is not there, then these holes are made by the fruit borer in the brinjal plant, thereby destroying the crop. So these are some reasons for which the genetic engineering is practiced. Although some people might wonder that so much of variation is available in brinjal, why should we make transgenic brinjal? Instead, use the brinjal variety which is suitable in particular area which is resistant to uh, fruit borer, but uh, this may not be enough and fruit borers uh, can attack the uh, crop plant. Golden rice have been developed and these golden rice can provide the vitamin A, which is deficient in uh, many uh, most of the diets. Biotic and abiotic stress management uh, through transgenic approach can be done. If viral resistance is required, then code protein mediated transfer of code protein gene can provide resistance against virus. PR protein can provide resistance against fungus and antibacterial toxin defensing type genes can provide resistance against bacteria. Proteinase cysteine can provide resistance against nematodes and herbicide and uh, VDicide 
can also be developed. For abiotic stress management, protein accumulation, manitol overexpression can provide drought resistance. Golden rice, three genes, phytoin synthase, phytoin desaturase, and carotin desaturase have been introduced into the rice varieties. Thereby, phytoin can be converted into carotenoids and carotene, which is precursor for vitamin A, and golden rice can become a very big source of vitamin A. One might wonder how much global area of biotech crops is there at present. So in 2018, 191 million hectares of biotech crop was there, which 103 acres was planted by developing countries and 88 acres was, million hectares was planted by industrial countries. Biotech crops are grown all over the world, in USA, in Canada, in South American countries, in Asian, European, Australia, India, all the countries have grown GM uh, crops. 17 million small and resource poor farmers and their families, totaling more than 65 million people benefited from biotech crops in 2019 alone. Total in the last, uh, since 1996, 2.7 billion hectares of biotech crop has been planted on earth. So that shows the importance of GM crops and GM technology. Then I, I, I will just spend some time on various methods of gene transfer. Uh, uh, three methods are you in use for genetic transformation, agrobacterium infection, gene gun, and protoplasm mediated genetic transformation. CRISPR-Cas technology has also come, which does not modify, does not introduce any new gene, but it modifies the gene. And genome editing is possible through CRISPR-Cas technology, which is very useful for crop improvement. In the agrobacterium mediated genetic transformation of plants, the principle of tDNA transfer has been used. And here you can see the mechanism of tDNA transfer into plant cell. On the right side, plant cells are shown and on the left side, bacterial cell is there. The plant cells, if they are wounded, then they produce acetocyrinjon, a flavonoid, which stimulates vir region of the tDNA. And from vir region, vir proteins are synthesized. And these vir proteins, then they can convert single-stranded tDNA intermediate is produced and this single-stranded tDNA then goes inside the plant cell and it integrates with the host, host uh, DNA and it starts producing uh, auxin and cytokinin and production of auxin and cytokinin leads to the development of crown gall tissue and in the crown gall tissue opines are synthesized upon which bacteria feeds. Now, tDNA can, single stranded tDNA can go inside the plant cell. If we can introduce the gene of interest into the tDNA by cutting it, then that gene of interest can also go into the plant as a natural, the, this bacterium acts as a natural genetic engineer and the engineered portion of the uh, tDNA goes inside the, plant, inside the plant cell. And if we can regenerate this plant cell into a uh, complete plant, then that complete plant become transgenic. This is the principle behind agrobacterium mediated genetic transformation and various plants have been uh, genetically modified using this technology. Here in Eleusine Korakana, we did an experiment uh, by which we use agrobacterium for genetic transformation. Here, uh, the plates show the callus tissue growing without any transformation activity and without any selection pressure, everything grows. But if these cells which have not been transformed, these cali, if they are grown in the presence of antibiotic, then nothing grows. But the, if these cali are transformed using agrobacterium and then they are grown in the selection pressure with the selection pressure, then some colonies grow and these colonies then can be taken and regeneration of complete plant is possible from these colonies 
and these plants will be genetically modified. Various factors have to be standardized before we can get high efficiency of transformation. The factors which we have to standardize include plasmid, what type of plasmid you want to take, incubation time, how much, and acetocyanogen concentration in the infection medium and co-cultivation medium, use of surfactant, and various other factors have to be standardized. And after standardization of various factors, one can get higher efficiency of transformation. And regeneration of complete plants after infection, agrobacterium infection is possible, and we can get transgenic plants shown as shown here. And they are showing the gas gene expression. Similar to that, in elucine, in pespalum also, we have got transgenic material using agrobacteria. Protoplasts have also been used uh, for genetic transformation, where for many years, protoplasts were preferred material for the transformation of uh, cereals because cereals were not naturally infected by agrobacteria. Here, the protoplasts were used for uh, gene transfer, direct gene transfer using chemical polyethylene glycol. Polyethylene glycol, in the presence of polyethylene glycol and naked DNA, the protoplast can uptake uh, the DNA and then they divide and can make colonies and they can be transformed. Here on the, in this slide, on the left side, the protoplast which were developed, protoplast were cultured uh, with the selection pressure, the nothing grew because these protoplasts were not genetically transformed. On the right side, genetically transformed protoplasts were cultured and large number of colonies developed there. And these colonies developed because they were <coughs> they were genetically transformed. <coughs> these colonies were then separated and put to regeneration medium and they develop into complete transgenic plant shown here. Transgenic plants resembles normal plants. They set normal seeds. They had normal flowering with six stamens and the, the microspores were also fertile. So transgenic plants had no difference except that they have an additional <coughs> feature. These transgenic plants then can be multiplied in tissue cultures to increase their number. Transgenic plants then should be confirmed for the presence of transgene through southern hybridization. Here we have used the negative control and positive control. Positive control shows the presence of the gene, transgene, and negative control does not show. And various transgenic materials, one, two, three, four, five, they were used as such without cutting from any restriction enzyme. One cut and two cuts were also introduced and one can see the presence of the transgene into these southern hybridization experiments. They confirm the presence of transgene. Similar experiments were carried out for other plants and presence of transgene has been shown. Biolistic gun can also be used for transferring the naked DNA into intact tissues, not protoplast. Because protoplast to plant regeneration is not possible, was not possible in all the plants. So this method of uh, biolistic was developed. And in this method, the DNA coated material is shot into the intact tissue, which receives the uh, biolistic particles, uh, gold particles coated with DNA. And this DNA goes into the tissue and integrates with the, with the recipient tissue and transgenics are produced. We have developed transgenic material of eleusine using biolistic gun. And the expression of gene was, was seen. Presence of transgene is, can be confirmed through southern hybridization and Western blot can tell you about the presence of the protein and expression of the expected phenotype should be there in the transgenic material. 
the transgenic material cannot be grown into farmer's field directly it has to go through various processes of regulation and then only it can go into farmer's field evaluation of transformed material is done at several levels presence and activity of introduced gene should be there other effects on the plant growth have to be evaluated because if the transgenic material causes plant growth reduction then it is of not great use environmental effect of the transgene food or feed safety can it cause more harmful uh, will it cause use of more harmful chemicals what are the probability and effects of gene escape from non transgenic variety nature of the introduced gene plant parts and growth stage in which the gene product is present so all these evaluation processes have to be there then only uh, transgenic material can be re released into the farmer's field i i want to show you now two things which are for the future and one has already come that about crispr cas9 and its use in the genome editing in the plants and development of new crop varieties uh, this is very useful because it does not require the use of any foreign dna material to be transferred into the plant and plant can be geno genetically modified and uh, it can be edited uh, so here this has been taken from the nature where bacterial dna the bacterial cell if it is attacked by the viral cell then the bacteria protects itself from the incoming virus cell into the region which is called crispr where the viral gene goes and integrate in the crispr area and from the crispr area crispr rna is formed which then will remove the uh, gene which is coming from the virus thereby protecting the bacteria from a viral attack following this technology the genome editing has been done in the plants uh, and for this crispr technology jennifer dodna and emmanuel charpentier have received nobel prize uh, last year crispr cas applications they can cause mutation gene editing creating complex animal models turning on and off of specific gene and gm plants can also be produced modification of human germline is possible uh, there are various benefits of transgenic plants which are too well known then second thing which i want to mention about the improvement of crop crop plants is nanotechnology through nanotechnology also the plants can be produced which have better growth in this picture you can see wild type of plants and cnt treated plant cnt at 200 microgram per ml was, was watered into this tobacco plants and they had more flowers more fruits and greater yield so this field also can be used for crop improvement with this i come to the end of my talk so i have spoken to you about various methods of gene transfer into the plants and also the crispr cas technology which uh, student should learn and also the nanotechnology which should also be explored in addition to that i have talked to you about the development of plant tissue culture and totipotency of plant cells thank you very much if you have any questions i will be happy to answer am i visible sir, now thank you very much thank you very much for that enlight yes sir yeah so thank you very much for that enlightening presentation sir cool. it is like uh, the father holding the child hand taking him or her into a journey of tissue culture starting from cellular totipotency where you spoke about the cork tissues and then taking them up to crispr cas and nanotechnology so you have given us a beautiful story it is a well woven story where the child is able to most of them are students out here so they would be very well able to appreciate the journey through which 
the subject itself has traversed and most interestingly is a major role which you have played there your experience is there you have been mentioning about professor steward as a, a role model who has been able to achieve so much i am sure that in the indian context your name is no less sir. so i am sure you will be a role model to many of us and we will be able to when we make our presentations present all your achievements also there and say how indian science is no way less than the foreign science thank you so much sir you have been an inspiration you, to all of us thank you rekha sir and uh, uh, i am sure the participants would be asking questions online sir the organizers will uh, make note of the questions and pass it on to you and based on your reply they will convey the replies to the participants uh, because we have this time frame of 1 hour per speaker so i think we can go on to the uh, next speaker and before i conclude i would also like to tell the participants to please learn not just science from dr kothari uh, professor kothari he stuck on to time he was given the time of 1 hour and sir ensured that though he had uh, volumes and volumes to tell he stuck on to time so that discipline in sir the punctuality in sir i wish all of us imbibe that would help us to grow better in future thank you once again sir thank you so much thank you very much thank you very much sir, so uh, i now take a uh, privilege in introducing professor mohammad anis the former dean and faculty of life sciences and chairman botany department aligarh muslim university sir has over 40 years of teaching and research experience having done his complete education at lucknow at the university of lucknow he did his post doctoral research at the aligarh muslim university and later on became a faculty there in 1984 his major areas of interest are in the field of morphogenesis and tissue culture he was responsible for establishing the laboratory of tissue culture and molecular biology and also a study program in plant biotechnology at the department of botany in the aligarh muslim university it was this which later on paved way for pursuing basic and applied research in the university he has also brought in lot of funding through research projects sponsored by various national agencies like the department of biotechnology the university grants commission the department of science and technology and the csar he has also been a program coordinator for various projects which have been handled by the department Professor Anis has been a recipient of various awards and fellowships significant among them are the UGC BSR faculty fellowship for his contribution in plant biotechnology he was awarded the national and the overseas biotechnology associateship of DBT from the government of india he has been an insa visiting scientist to frankfurt university and the institute of genetics and plant biotechnology at slovak republic he has been an eminent scientist of the year 2007 by nisa he is a vigyan ratan samman of the council of science and technology of the up he has received the professor p maheshwari medal in 2013 he has received awards from the ugc and the professor h e street memorial award by the plant tissue culture association of india he has been a visiting professor in the college of food and agricultural sciences king saud university riyadh and has been a life member of many learned academic societies like the plant tissue culture and national academy of sciences india a fellow of the indian botanical society indian society of genetics and plant breeding international society of plant morphologists and the linnean society of london with his years of experience he has about uh, 250 research papers in reputed journals he has an h factor of 44 and he has two books that have been published by springer he has to his credit 25 students with phd degrees 10 students with mphil degrees besides that he has scores of phd students so now we have another distinguished professor in front of us who is going to take us through the second journey of plant tissue culture where he will be talking to us about mostly conservation and sustainable utilization of medicinal plants over to you sir so <clears throat> thank you very much for your kind words i am uh, really very happy to uh, to uh, to join and share my some of the my experiences 
uh, what we have been doing at the Aligarh University uh, during the last uh, 20 to 30 years. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 you know that uh, plant tissue culture has been uh, viewed as a key technology for enhancing the capability of planting material of uh, selected high yielding varieties so as to boost production and productivity. And uh, for uh, before we go for the GM crops, uh, we, we, we would like to have a homogeneous population of plants and uh, that can only be possible through uh, propagating plants in vitro, where all two to type plants can be raised and uh, their uh, what you call the genetic fidelity can be confirmed uh, once we raise them. Uh, 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 the, uh, the work in fact uh, uh, is uh, related to tissue culture uh, is uh, mainly responsible for the large scale propagation of medicinal plants, which are uh, on the verge of extension because of the many climatic conditions or uh, anthropogenic activities. And what I feel is that uh, the three main factors, that is your poverty, number second is your pollution, and uh, third is your, uh, what you call uh, the degradation of the land area, which has resulted in the loss of many of our prized medicinal plants. Science and technology, as we know, uh, that is uh, feed on each other, Advances in basic sciences contributing to newer technologies are well known. Uh, no other example is uh, more striking than the resurgence of interest in the study of new biology, what we call it as plant biotechnology. And uh, this area has uh, given us the opportunity to take the DNA from a um, prokaryotic organism and it can be inserted into a eukaryotic organisms and uh, there are no barriers. So what I feel is that the science, uh, this, uh, the area could be widened only by including subjects of modern need. Advanced uh, biotechnological methods of culturing plant cells and tissues have uh, opened uh, new, you know, the vistas for uh, propagating many plants which were not possible earlier and uh, uh, this has uh, given us uh, the opportunity to propagate them rapidly and this has helped in the conservation of by establishing tissue bank or gene banks. The research in my lab focuses in the field of morphogenesis and tissue culture, particularly the aspects of in vitro regeneration and micropropagation of important uh, uh, medicinal plants uh, economic and other woody plant species. So my presentation will aim at uh, uh, <coughs> describing the in vitro protocols for regeneration, mass propagation, and conservation of some valuable medicinal plants uh, like Tylophora indica, Rolfia serpentina, Pterocarpus marsupium, Vitex nigundo, and Salix tetraisperma. Uh, this uh, shows a news item that farmers earning as much as three lakhs per acre by cultivating herbs. Uh, government is, con uh, is confident of doubling farmers income by 2022. This all could be possible when we encourage our farmers and we expect uh, a lot of help from the government, then only we can uh, achieve this uh, target. Currently, as we all know that around 4,000 to 10,000 medicinal plants are on the endangered list and this number is expected to increase. To counter overexploitation of natural resources and consequently threat to biodiversity, sustainable practical cultivation of medicinal plant is uh, required. Uh, now, in fact, uh, what uh, problem we have faced uh, in the problem of uh, this year medicinal plants, there's, there is a low seed setting in uh, most of the uh, economic plants and uh, high dormancy and low percent of seed germination and poor seed viability. 
and number next is the no commercialization of tissue culture protocols do they are available for many medicinal plants a uh, large number of laboratories are working and they have successfully established so many protocols but this has not yet been utilized by the commercial uh, what you call uh, uh, organizations so there is a need to popularize them so that we can make use of uh, uh, this technique for our farmers or a common person who want to enhance uh, his uh, what you call uh, uh, the <clears throat> sustainability in vitro culture techniques offer a viable tool for the mass multiplication of genetically identical plant material and the germ plasm conservation of rare and endangered plants so this is the most important part of that here uh, if you look at it that uh, there are four major areas of biotechnology which can directly help in the conservation of our uh, what you call the valuable uh, plant genetic resources number one is uh, uh, known as the molecular biology uh, uh, here you can say that uh, what is the dna marker the dna marker is a segment of the dna uh, whose inheritance can easily easily be monitored and it, it can be checked in the uh, populations. So this helped in the assessment of diversity, population structure and distribution pattern. The second part of this is the di molecular diagnostic. This helps in the assessment of phytosanitary status of the germplasm, which we bring from the outside and or we exchange between the laboratories. So on the basis of this, uh, we can identify that uh, which material is to be propagated or is to be multiplied further. The C part is the <coughs> tissue culture technology. This is uh, directly related to micro propagation, slow growth and embryo rescue operation, which directly helps in the plant breeding uh, strategies. And the uh, D part is the cryopreservation that help in the long-term conservation of seed recalcitrant species, vegetatively propagated species, biotechnological products, etc., like that. Apart from these four areas of uh, this, your what you call the different approaches, uh, there is another one is emerging, what we call it as the information technology, or what we refer these days as the bioinformatics that directly related with the documentation, training and technology transfer, germplasm exchange, DNA database, or uh, 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 genome maps, gene bank inventories. Uh, now, the landmarks in plant tissue culture, as uh, Professor Kothari has already stated that uh, the concept of totipotency was given by Hebeland in 1902. And after what you call a gap of 81 years that the first transgenic plant came into being by Jeff Shell. So these two events <coughs> can be regarded as two landmark corner stones in the long march towards today's achievement in plant and agriculture biotechnology revolution. Uh, he was uh, the person, uh, uh, Austrian botanist, uh, who gave us the Gottlieb Hebeland, who in fact, uh, uh, idea presented in 1902, uh, was called as the totipotentiality. Uh, theoretically, all plant cells are able to give rise to a complete plant, provided we give a correct signal or a correct stimulus to these somatic cells, then one somatic cells or a group of cells, they can be transformed into an embryo and ultimately a complete plants can be achieved. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, everybody is uh, aware with Professor Kanchan and Maheshwari, uh, what, uh, he, whom we call it as a father of uh, Indian plant tissue culture. In fact, he established this uh, exciting area of research in Delhi University in uh, 1950s. 
P. Mashwari has been one of the most outstanding personalities of Indian science. And of course, uh, in the world botany, especially in the area of experimental embryology and plant tissue culture. The first major contribution of uh, tissue culture to general botany or to some extent general biology concerned with totipotency, that is demonstration of the fact that every cell has the potential of making an embryo and a plantlet. And from this one insight emerged, that is the differentiation which is basically a matter of pro programmed switching off and switching on of the gene uh, activity rather than total loss of genes. These genes are never lost, simply that they become what you call the latent and whenever they require, they, re they are reactivated and ultimately during the different uh, stages of the development, they show their activity. A second contribution of uh, tissue culture is related to the hormonal control of these differentiation, uh, more specifically in showing the importance of cytokinins and auxins, and also the delicate balance of these auxin and cytokinins in the differentiation and controlling the morphogenesis of roots. <coughs> now, the beginning of micropropagation of medicinal plants in India, how? Beyond the discovery of kinetin by Miller in 1955, the major work on the in vitro propagation was centered on tobacco, that is Nicotiana tobaccum, tissue culture, the first convincing demonstration of the control or differentiation of shoot or roots of both by oxygen and cytokinin ratio. This was proposed by Iskug and Miller in 1957. The birth of uh, <coughs> The birth of concept of totipotency that is was established in carrot full flowering plants from its phloem cells by Stewart in 1964. And uh, you'll, uh, the participants will be happy to know that the first medicinal plant micropropagated and cultivated is the Rolfia serpentina through callus based organogenesis. And this was established by an Indian scientist, Dr. S. C. Chaturvedi in 1968. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, lists the advantages of in vitro micropropagation or medicinal plants. Number one, of course, is the high rate of uh, multiplication. The second, uh, environmental environment can be controlled or altered to meet a specific needs of the plant. Plant available all year round, independent of regional or seasonal variation because, uh, I mean, it uh, takes place, uh, this is all uh, the techniques is being uh, <coughs> carried out under controlled environmental condition. So it is independent of any, what you call the fluctuation, environmental fluctuation. Next is the identification and production of clones with desired characteristics, production of secondary metabolites. This is the area which is gaining uh, a lot of uh, what you call interest these days <coughs> because you need not to uproot the whole plants in, in order to extract the desired secondary metabolites. Whether you want to raise callus tissue or you want to multiply the plant, then from this we can have the secondary metabolites uh, and without damaging the natural, what you call the standing of the crops. New and improved genetically engineered plant can be introduced, and uh, this can be through agrobacterial tubifacients or other uh, ballistic gene gun or direct gene transfer methods. Conservation of threatened plant species, and of course, the last, the preservation of genetic material by cryopreservation. These labs have been established at the Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants, that is at Lucknow and national and uh, NBPGR, uh, that is your uh, at, uh, located at IRI New Delhi, where these labs, these facilities have been provided for their conservation. Now, during the past 30 years, scientists have cultured many medicinal plants, cell, organ, and hairy roots. In addition, the large scale culture have also been tested on medicinal plants. Uh, we have been competing not with the European country. We, we should uh, always, our competitor is the China. 
and China is consuming and exporting maximum amount of herb material in the world. So why we are lagging behind that we have to find out and have to establish these facilities in our own country. Now, this uh, shows the statistical analysis that uh, how we can uh, multiply a plant uh, or, or from an, an X plant rather you can say, and millions of uh, plants can be established. Say if you take one single node stem cutting from the field after four months, you will have an established plant in vitro. And if you make that into 40 cuttings after two months, you will have 40 plants in culture. They all can be raised uh, exinic without any infection or, or, or what you call, I mean, uh, any <clears throat> uh, the multiplication of plants by a factor of 40 every two months will yield 25 lakh 60,000 potential plant in 12 months from one exudary bud. The plant material increases in geometrical progression during subsequent years. And by conventional method, if you compare, then through tuber segment, eight to 10 plants from one plant in three years. So this was established by uh, uh, Dr. Chaturvedi et al. in 2007. Here you can say uh, in, in case of Dioscoria floribunda, so uh, <clears throat> a good multiplication of these through tissue culture has been established by uh, this group in uh, National Botanical Research Institute, Lucknow. Now we have been doing tissue culture of uh, so many herbaceous plants and shrubs and uh, <clears throat> the woody species. So the most, uh, why, why we go for woody species because uh, that is the most important uh, and they are directly concerned with the agro uh, a, a forestation program. Uh, many of this uh, uh, because of uh, the government policies of industrialization and urbanization, a lot of plants are being cut and uh, the land is uh, uh, being degraded. So we have to recultivate, we have to reestablish these species or these plants in the natural environment. The problem that we are facing, the propagating material of tree species is mainly through seeds. The germination percentage is usually very low because of hard fruit coat and low seed viability. World Conservation Monitoring Center reported that over exploitation of these species, as I said, because of these your uh, uh, growing fast uh, industrialization, the woody species are at the edge of extinction and therefore there is a need to conserve it through unconventional methods. Tissue culture technology has been successfully applied in propagation of such species where convention methods have limitations. Uh, micro propagation, uh, if you compare it with the macro, macro has been routinely used by these horticultural uh, gardener to propagate the plants, but micro propagation is a technique uh, of regenerating clonally uniform plant under aseptic conditions. You can see that from one single node, mm -hmm. so many good, healthy, and flourishing these your uh, plants have been uh, induced in case of a Tacoma instance. This is for our plant tissue culture. Yes, there are two hormones uh, which are directly responsible. One is the cytokinin and another is the oxygen. And as I said earlier, that a, a delicate balance of these oxygen and cytokinin that helps uh, in the differentiation of different parts of a plant. Oxygens are mainly responsible that stimulate the root development, while the cytokinins, they stimulate shoot development. If the higher the oxygen and low cytokinin, these changes take place. If you have high cytokinin and low oxygen, then such a, uh, the activity, what was the different root formation, Callus initiation, first stage of embryogenesis, adventitious root formation from callus, callus initiation in dicots, adventitious shoot formation, and axillary 
shoot proliferation in shoot cultures when there is a what you call uh, oxygen and cytokinins oxygens are more you will have the root development cytokinins are more oxygen are less shoot development and when both are almost equal then we have uh, callus development now uh, there are uh, different what you call uh, the um, uh, these plant growth uh, regulators uh, which have been used for uh, study during your in vitro studies here i have uh, projected thyroduron kinetin 6 uh, 6 benzyl adenine and uh, uh, the recent one is your uh, the metatoprolin uh, <coughs> uh, ba is a most common that is your 6 benzyl amino purin has been reported to induce various physiological disorders uh, Uh, causing problem in rooting and acclimatization of regenerated shoots. Uh, the results of an earlier study showed that uh, natural cytokinin metatoprolin had a positive influence on shoot multiplication. This this has been recently on the uh, left hand side is the metatoprolin which has been uh, uh, reported by Stenard in 1997. and where the use of metatoprolin in plant tissue culture has gained increasing interest uh, due to reports on various important parameters like uh, enhanced multiple shoot uh, induction better quality of uh, shoot and successful rooting thus the plants which are raised through uh, in metatoprolin supplemented medium they are easy to acclimatize and they show much better performance in comparison to those plants which are uh, induced on thyroduron kinetin or ba although ba is widely used uh, as a efficient and uh, reasonably priced cytokinin in plant tissue culture it often induces disproportional growth or inhibition of rooting and toxicity and therefore uh, uh, other what you call the thyroduron uh, and metatoprolin had been tried by us and we got a good response uh, uh, on uh, the basis of uh, their what you call uh, the <coughs> uh, and these differences are uh, can you can see that the structural differences with the metatoprolin batdz could have a profound effect on plant regulation regeneration during organogenesis here you can see that this has a hydroxyl group which is absent in all these three cytokinins and this has been uh, uh, this has supported what you call the 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 good performance the good proliferation and the healthy shoot rates uh, in case of uh, uh, <coughs> cytokinins uh, studies in uh, uh Uh, thyroduron is a synthetic phenyl urea uh, which uh, the presence uh, on or exposure beyond the optimal level can lead to many drawbacks in thyroduron what happen when we treat the uh, nodal segments or any explants that gives a good flush of uh, multiple shoots but if it is continue to be there for 3 weeks then the sem the shoots become stunted and they all show a negative effect further proliferation was not possible so what we did was that then during the four sub culture the thyroduron was withdrawn from the uh, medium and thereafter without medium the ms medium gave a very good flourishing and ultimately that could lead to a good proliferation these are some of the plants which we have been working at the legal university that uh, the one which are listed with red color they belongs to herbaceous plants and the one which are with uh, uh, blue dark nectanthus arboristris vitex nigundo vitex trifolia cassia lata cassia occidentalis tecomystans they all are shrubs and of course the last one is all the woody species which are very important Uh, from the what you call the industrial point of view, Tikoma, Andulata, Terocarpus, Marsupium, 
Belenitis egyptiaca, Salix tetraspama, Elbesia lebac, Acacia arenbergiana, and Erythrina variegata. So these are some of the plants which have been worked out in my lab. Uh, this uh, shows uh, steps in in vitro propagation of plants. There are two uh, what you call the pathways. Number one, we call it as a direct organogenesis. And number two is we call it as a indirect organogenesis. In case of direct organogenesis, you can see that it take the X plant and they are what you call the medium, MS medium or WPM woody plant medium or whatever medium we all we have to standardize it according to the woody, according to the species what you have been working. Then they are treated with the suitable cytokinin direct shoot birds they appear on the x plant and when they are subcultured then we try to multiply shoot multiplication and after proper what you call three or four subculturing the growth takes place and when they attain a length of about six centimeter or more then individual shoots are isolated and they are put on the root inducing medium in order to get the individual micro shoots and then they are transferred to soil light and ultimately through hardening process we can establish them in earthen pots containing garden soil another aspect that is what the, the second is the indirect organogenesis this is known as the induction of callus from the x plant and this is usually performed uh, in the presence of uh, auxins and the 2,4-D, 2,4-dichlorophenoxy acetic acid or 2,4-5-T, 2,4-trichlorophenoxy uh, 2,4, <coughs> acetic acid, they have been found to induce uh, callus mass. What is a callus? That is an undifferentiated mass of tissue, mainly composed of parenchymate cells. So from this callus mass, uh, we transfer them into a new medium containing the cytokinins because cytokinins are responsible for the induction of shoots. And from here, you can see that shoot multiplication occurs. And then again, following the same procedure, we can have what you call the plants. So what's the difference between these two here? Here, if you get a direct shoot bird from the X plant, we can have a clone plants. They all are true to type. And here, when we get through callus, we can induce variability. As you know, that genetic variability is the basis of crop improvement. And uh, when uh, it is the variability which helps the plant breeder to select the individual <coughs> which can be uh, helpful for further improvement programs. Direct organogenesis, as I said, morphogenesis, which result in the formation of various organs, that is shoot and roots, without an intervening callus phase, because intervening callus is there that disturb the colonial fidelity. Uh, this is the plant, uh, Cardiospermum heli cacabum. Uh, this is uh, usually known as the balloon vine or hard pea. This belongs to family Sependaceae, <clears throat> an annual climber, the leaves, roots, seeds, and whole herb, and the mainly used in the rheumatism, nervous disease, stiffness of the limbs, and snake bite. This is uh, widely used in our Ayurvedic system of uh, medicine. This, uh, this work is based uh, on the effect of TDZ, that is your thiodosron. Uh, if you can see that the MS medium, which made it was supplemented with 0.3 micromolar, then we got good, what you call the shoot induction. You can see here A and this. Uh, after that, uh, the medium, the proliferation of shoot on hormone free medium. <clears throat> then in further, you can, as I said, that uh, thioduzron was withdrawn from B, C and D. You can see it here and ultimately a good proliferation with healthy shoots was obtained after six or seven subculture 
and these were individually isolated, taken back, and were routed ultimately, and they give rise to uh, complete plants. Uh, another plant uh, of uh, importance, economic importance, is the Alamanda cathartica. Uh, 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 this is uh, commonly known as the golden trumpet vine, belongs to family Epocynaceae. Uh, it's a climber and its leaves and roots are mainly used for the extraction of an alkaloid, which is used uh, for your HIV properties more recently some anti-cancerous activities has also been recorded. And the active constituents are flavonoids and iridoids. So uh, uh, one important aspect uh, of uh, tissue culture is uh, the individual effect of different cytokinins. And when the optimal concentration of cytokinins one established, it is added with the low concentration of oxygen, then that has been found to accelerate the, what you call the rate of proliferation. So there, here we have to, uh, we have studied the interactive effect of cytokinins and uh, oxygens. Uh, in uh, figure A and B, you can see the shoot proliferation and multiplication on MS medium supplemented with benzyladenine <clears throat> plus uh, naphthalene acetic acid. In case of C and D, uh, this is the MS medium, which was supplemented with kinetin, the same concentration, and you can see the difference in the proliferation rate. And in the last one uh, is what you call as the mass multiplication on MS medium containing the metatoplin with the NAA after so many eight to 12 weeks of inoculation. Uh, this uh, is, uh, I mean, uh, the comparative study clearly give an indication that uh, metatoplin has been found to be a uh, suitable, would be the, the best among these three for maximum biomass production. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Another aspect of the tissue culture is uh, the single, when uh, first you study the effect of single cytokinins, then you go uh, with the uh, optimum cytokinin concentration plus your oxygen concentration. And the next aspect is the effect of growth additives. When you add some additive, then there are, I mean, you are likely to get some good proliferation uh, here you can see in figure A, we have added the adenine sulfate after 12 weeks of incubation. And in this case, C, B, glutamine was added in this case. And after uh, uh, eight weeks of inoculation and C and D, mass multiplication on MS plus metatoplin 3 micro plus Na plus ammonium nitrate. So this ammonium nitrate was found to be what you call uh, better uh, additives in case of uh, uh, further what you call the proliferation. And this paper had recently published in 2020 in industrial crops and products. Uh, effects of TDZ, the, um, apart from uh, your uh, BA and kinetin and, uh, and your metatoplin, uh, we have also tried to see the response of TDZ on shoot multiplication. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the mother uh, tissue, what are taken from the plant, uh, and this was uh, put onto the medium. But breaking on TDZ from noodle segment after 30 days, and this is your, you can see the shoot multiplication on MS vessel medium devoid of TDZ. Here you can see the TDZ was added here, but in this case, the TDZ was withdrawn. And the next one is the shoot multiplication of this exposed culture MS medium containing BA after 12 weeks of incubation. In this case, a reduced concentration of BA and with TDZ that gave a better response uh, in case of this, your, uh, uh, of course, the uh, <coughs> Alamanda cathartica. 
and this uh, also gave us a very positive results. Uh, a very important uh, forest uh, tree, that is the forest tree is a Terry Pterocarpus marsupium uh, Roxburghi. This belongs to family Fabaceae and uh, its uh, common name is Indian Kino or what we call it as uh, uh, Bijasal. <coughs> it is a forest uh, woody tree, its status is vulnerable multiple forestry. Why it is important? Because I said that in northern India, in my area, in uh, Lucknow, Kanpur, Aligarh, or the adjoining area, this has totally vanished. We don't have any plants now growing in these areas. So for that uh, has been listed as uh, threatened, endangered in IUCN uh, list. And therefore, it is a very good, what you call the candidate for tissue culture or for the micro propagation work. And a lot of work has to be done it's still in this. Uh, the plant has become very useful medicinal property used as a powerful astringent for diarrhea, dysentery, fever, and toothache. It is reported that an aqueous infusion of wood is of use in diabetes and water is stored in vessel made of wood is reported, uh, reputed to have anti-diabetic qualities. Because of this factor that these plants have been chopped off and only few plants are uh, this year are growing in the Madhya Pradesh area uh, in our country. And these are, you can see that uh, this is a uh, growing uh, at Raigarh uh, district of Harsia division in Madhya Pradesh. And these are the various, what you call the products of this, which are available in the market. What we call it as the VGSR, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research is working on this. And a new these drugs have come in the market. And the people, they have been using it. And it has been found <coughs> that the water <coughs> is stored in these vessels, which are made from the hardwood. Uh, if, uh, if it is a... Uh, uh, kept overnight and is uh, given to the patient next morning for say after 15 days the glucose level was uh, 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 tested and it was found to be considerably reduced so for that uh, matter there is a uh, this your ruthless what you call the removal of this your by the uh, the uh, this your for the people who are uh, um, uh, making this uh, for their own profits. They are cutting these uh, uh, trees. Uh, and the problem is that it shows uh, in nature, it shows only 20 to 30 percent germination. So whatever uh, the trees or whatever the seeds which fall on the ground, they do not germinate because of, uh, I mean, uh, various uh, 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 factors. Uh, uh, which makes them it uh, very vulnerable and therefore we started working on this plant and were able to get uh, some good results uh, in uh, making uh, the plants uh, micro propagated. Uh, <clears throat> here you can see that uh, these are the winged fruits and uh, these are the excise seeds out of that. There are two types of seeds, one are dark colored and yellow, some are lighter. The lighter one, they are what you call, they can germinate in bipe seed, otherwise they are dead, they do not germinate. And these seeds, you cannot remove this, your uh, peel off uh, with your fingers because so intricately woven, so as to very difficult to uh, remove them. Uh, the seeds were collected and in vitro germination took place on presence of MS medium and GA3. And uh, there you can see the effect of TDZ, the uh, multiple, what you call the proliferation of the shoot, the induction of multiple shoot took place on MS plus TDZ plus IA. And these, uh, these, these shoots were further proliferated and uh, uh, to next generation. You can see the induction of multiple shoot from CNX plants on MS plus TDZ plus ADS. And ultimately, this is the culture showing multiple shoot with fully expanded leaves and better growth. So these were successfully established. And here the different stages of your 
rooting, the bridge formation. You can say the isolated healthy shoot. Then the on the bridge formation, we uh, put them in the IBA plus fluoroglucinol. This was uh, found to play a, a major role in the induction of roots. Otherwise, simply IAA or IBA, it uh, didn't give any response. And this way, they can see that the complete planted was obtained after uh, uh, this your successful transfer to the area. Uh, <clears throat> effect of a metatoplane, uh, then we wanted to study that was uh, related to the thyroid. Then we came to the metatoplane. You can see that CNX plant here, A, B is your uh, metatoplane 7.5 uh, micro molar, then uh, BA was 7.5 and kinetin was that. Comparatively, you see the best result was obtained with the metatoplane, as I said earlier also, maybe because of the hydroxyl group, which is present in one of the side chain. This, then they study the interactive effect of cytokinin and oxygen. You can see the multiple shoot formation. Again, the comparative of this, your, you can see this is A is the metatoplane and B, uh, the NA, IA, and IBA. The, the best response was, of course, was, uh, was the metatoplane with NAA. <coughs> uh, these are the different stages of root formation and ultimately the successful transfer to the field condition. Vidania somniferia, uh, somnifera, you all are aware about it. Ashwagandha, uh, uh, a good work has been done and it's a very potential uh, herb, herb uh, medicine in the Ayurvedic system of medicine. Uh, this also we worked on uh, uh, what you call uh, BA and kinetin and different, you can see the profession has been successfully obtained. Selix tetraisperma, this is a difficult crop to work out, belongs to family. Selicase, woody species, vulnerable is known as vulnerable active constituent, are uh, these and used as antipyretic, analgesic, and astringent. So this, uh, this uh, uh, we were the first to, I mean, report this. The paper was published in Trees, the Structure and Function in 2011. You can see that uh, about 80 to 90, what you call uh, treatments were tried and the best response was obtained in WP main, the woody plant medium supplemented with BA after prior exposure to WPM with TDZ. You can see that this, this, this has played a major, major role. TDZ, you can uh, induce shoot and then you have to withdraw it, add with a uh, reduced concentration of BA and ultimately you can see the uh, you can establish the good cultures uh, by making so many what you call treatment. Subculturing, what is subculturing often becomes imperative when the density of cell tissue organ becomes excessive to increase the volume of culture or to increase the number of organs, shoot or somatic embryo for micropropagation. Subculturing helps to maintain juvenility of the mother explant. Sometimes what happens, the micronutrients get exhausted and therefore when we subculture with the fresh medium, then they can rejuvenate and we can get a fresh, uh, fresh flush. This is the showing the frequency of subculture passages. Here you can see that at the fourth one, we got the maximum shoots and thereafter a decline occurs. So here up to this, we can get a maximum number of shoots. Indirect organogenesis, as I said, when you go for uh, uh, callus formation, Tidophora indica is another very important plant of family Asclepidiaceae. And here, uh, this uh, Tidophoridine, a new molecule has been, which has been found to be anti-cancerous. And this is, that's why this is gaining a lot of importance. The leaf tissue was taken, it was, uh, transform into a callus mass and this from this callus mass when it was transferred to kinetin you can see there's green birds that started appearing and the shoots come on that adventitious shoot regeneration in tidophora you can see the shoots have come up individual were put into the rooting medium and ultimately they are successfully transplanted into the greenhouse <coughs> 
Kikoma is trans. It's a very popular uh, ornamental. Uh, you, you have seen a lot of along the roadside. It, uh, the people, uh, they have been growing and even uh, the gardens, uh, the historical gardens also, you can just very attractive. And why it is important? Because this is your tichomin and tichostanin. It has been found to be present here. You can see that with these, the induction of callus from the internodal segments on MS plus 7.5 mu 24D and 4V swab incubation. And from here, this you can see that induction of so many uh, shoots uh, after four weeks of culture. So we, we do expect some variation or some variability in that. And this is the uh, multiplication of these uh, plants. Uh, in vitro and ex vitro routing were successfully obtained and established, and it was done. Now, the genomic is instability in relation to morphogenesis. Callus uh, derived from various explanted organ or cell show cytological alterations with prolonged subculture and individual cells becoming progressively polyploid and aneuploid. Several shoot birds could arise from a single callus induction of regeneration via callus would seem an alternative proposition. Polyploid and aneuploid cell may retain their capacity to regenerate, giving rise to mutant form, which may be favorable or unfavorable. So here you can see that, uh, I mean, we were working on the Glycemax somatic embryogenesis, and you can see that somatic cell preparation, this shows the uh, expected chromosome diploidy was equal to 40, and, but the range from 36 to 42. Here, this uh, plate shows the 42 chromosome, this is the normal 40 chromosome, and this is a deficient of 36 chromosome. An employee can survive and regeneration process and has been reported in many plants. So uh, but this shows the variability in the chromosome number. Another aspect, uh, very important aspect of plant tissue culture is the somatic embryogenesis or differentiation of uh, somatic embryo and zygotic embryo has already been explained to you by Professor Kothari. And here you can see that this is a we can process by which the somatic cells or tissue develop into differentiated embryos. Uh, again, this work was conducted by us in Teurocarpus marsupium. Uh, you can see that uh, this your MS medium supplemented with 24D uh, gave rise to a good callus and after surface of callus was reduced with BA, uh, then you can see that globular, uh, these embryos have started appearing and then somatic embryos at the heart shaped stage grown on MS plus BA plus NAA plus ABA. Here ABA, uh, abscessic acid that played a good role in the differentiation of this. You can see that uh, the two cotyledons have started differentiating. So, uh, um, uh, uh, successful of somatic embryogenesis. The stages of somatic embryogenesis in planted regeneration in Teurocarpus marsupium. You can see that uh, the reduced concentration 0.5 mu m BA plus NAA plus ABA 10 mu m that give rise to a perfect what you call the cotyledons. Here these are the two cotyledons they have been established and some uh, this uh, uh, somatic, uh, the elongated pulmonary part shoot effects of a somatic embryo rooted on half MS plus IBA plus fluoroglucinol and conversion into a plant layer. Uh, this again uh, appeared in the trees in the year 2010. A successful transformation of this. So the those who are interested in Pterocarpus marsupium. Uh, they can work out and can improve uh, by taking this. Uh, Vitex nigundo, another important plant of family, Verbinaceae. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, 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 the active compounds possess anti-cancer and anti-HIV properties, and therefore this is important. Uh, this uh, got a very good result, the recurrent production of shoots in Vitex nigundo. Here, this was taken from the mature tree. This is a mature tree. Uh, you can see the induction of shoot and then of course the proliferation. Now from these, we took another, this your, what you call the neural segment and therefore it was multiplied 
and a large number of plants could be obtained. This is known as the recurrent production of shoots in Vitus nigundo. All you can see this and successfully transformed. So this is the uh, this uh, 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 a good means of propagation. Excised root culture. Uh, there are several plant species root segments which have been reported to regenerate, indicating possibility of developing a regenerative excised root culture for their germplasm preservation. Here you can see these are the root segment of Berenitis egyptiaca, and from here you can see the induction or the appearance of these your green birds. And these green birds are nothing but ultimately they will transform into young shoots. So root is another what you call the medium, and this was obtained in Berenitis egyptiaca, Rajasthan area, Hingota, uh, it belongs to family Berenitisi, and this is a xerophytic tree. Uh, this we got it from the Jodhpur and uh, ultimately, I mean, did work on that. Here, this uh, the the root, root, excise root culture of Balenitis. This is the root segment and from here you can see this green color shoot are emerging. This is the shoot birds are emerging and these ultimately, these were uh, transformed on uh, the suitable medium uh, in which we are already optimized and we got the results. And uh, this, uh, this too was uh, uh, successfully. Now the next part of the tissue culture is the synthetic seeds. The encapsulated somatic embryos or the vegetative part of the plant which function in mimic seeds and can develop into plantlet under suitable conditions. Uh, <clears throat> you, uh, we all know that seed is a mature megasporangium uh, in which uh, there lives uh, a young life and that's a baby which is giving the proper nutrient it ultimately grows into a seedling and ultimately a plant so apart from that we can take we can take what you call the vegetative parts of the plant the so nodal segments or the quaternary node or a root segment or whatever that and then encapsulate them under a suitable medium and to make them as a artificial birds and these are referred to as the artificial seeds the sprouting of encapsulated bird of tylophora indica on ms basal pdm pillar ba shoot development from encapsulated parts these uh, these are known as artificial seeds and when they are kept on the medium already sterilized then you can see the proliferation occurs and here you can see that in a single uh, what you call short you can have a, a shoot system and you can have a, a root segment these all all these have been uh, they uh, has been uh, successfully established this was in uh, araulfia tetraphylla uh, these are the synthetic seeds uh, uh, prepared encapsulated nodal segment they were placed on the medium for germination and then you proliferation and ultimately the growth uh, what is a hyperhidricity? This is an abnormality which uh, when those who are working in tissue culture, they will, in, uh, they will see that uh, a physiological disorder that results in excessive hydration, low lignification, impaired stomatal function and reduced mechanical extent of tissue culture related plant. Shoot tip necrosis, the tip of the shoot become black gradually leading towards uh, uh, lower side. Uh, this work uh, was carried out in Shizizium cumini. Everybody is uh, very popular. This is fruit, highly anti-diabetic and weight loss property. So this two was, uh, these are, you can see that I have tried to focus the hyperhydric shoot of Shizizium cumini after six to eight weeks of incubation on MS plus BA. You can see all these shoot. This is all uh, vitrified. Uh, 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 this is uh, what you call uh, the reduced, uh, not good growth, and this is all succulent. So these are all abrasions. They are not preferred. They are not what you call of any importance in tissue culture, only unless they have to be rectified. How to overcome this? This, this is the problem for us. So this is what uh, we, we did it in Shizizium here. This was, uh, the medium was uh, added uh, with uh, additional cytokinin metatoplane after four weeks, you can see that multiplication rate was enhanced and <clears throat> these should become uh, normal in growth. You can see all these the cultures, they were properly healthy after uh, this your new combination of that. 
Now, the secondary metabolites, we have been working on that adventitious root culture, this establishment and proliferation of adventitious root culture from nodal segment of Alamanda cathartica. Uh, uh, these are all uh, for the student that hairy root culture induced by agrobacterium rhizogenes. And second one is the adventitious root culture induced by effect of various PGR. So we have worked on the second one, and this is the application of adventitious root culture. It helps to spare the overexploitation of naturally grown plant. We cannot uh, uproot them, but rather we can uh, uh, take the uh, few, I mean, uh, the explant, and from these explant, we can raise adventitious root in the culture medium. The regulation of secondary metabolic pathways concerned with the level of product enzyme and gene could be easily achieved using this technique. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, this is a, a nodal segment. You can see, and from here, the root have started emerging in the shaker medium. And this, you can see the initial days of uh, proliferation, uh, older one, and here, the maximum, what you call the culture showing the effect of NaCl, sodium chloride with the optimized media on root biomass after 12 weeks. Uh, secondary metabolites, you all are aware, aware, are defined as small organic molecules produced by an organism that are not essential for their growth, development, and reproduction. Uh, extraction and quantification of flavonoids from the leaves of regenerants in Alamanda cathartica. This was done in order to see that, how does it affect the yield content of that? The effect of PGR, which is plant growth regulator on total leaf extract. Here we got the maximum, it is the control 0 0.8 gram. And when it was the medium, it was grown on metatoplane plus NA plus ammonium nitrate, the yield was enhanced to 1.3. So the percentage yield was around 13. And the effect of culture media on total flavonoid and quercetin. Quercetin is important uh, constituent in that. And here too, you can see from 169, it's gone to 174. And uh, the percentage was 55.20. So these two has recently appeared in industrial crops and products in 2020 uh, issue. Uh, these are the various, what you call uh, NMR, and studied uh, the quantitative analysis of iridoids by colorometric and HPTLC methods. These two, we have tried to find out that uh, um, uh, the total iridoid by colorometric analysis. This also, there are so many treatments we have tried, and ultimately on half MS plus uh, 0.5 mu IBA, 120 mm NACL, 4% sucrose incubation, we got 5.53 plus minus 0.03, while in natural condition, so it was 2.07. So the idea is that, I mean, depending on the various combination, and uh, we can enhance uh, the major metabolite or viridoid rich fraction and their content with respect to the control plants. And these are the various. Uh, <clears throat> the last part of my talk is uh, the coronal fidelity of the micro propagated plants. Molecular markers have come up as the most desirable tool for establishing genetic uniformity of micro propagated plant. Uh, 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 you are other molecular markers like rapids and ISSR. They are frequently used these days, and they uh, they they are uh, they are required in a very less amount and do not involve any radioactive levels and are simple and tell. And therefore, the students who are working in this area, they can make use of these in their laboratory and can see that how, I mean, the plants which have been raised through tissue culture are two to type or not. So these are the clones of Rolfia serpentina and Rolfia tetraphylla. And uh, these are what you call are the agros gel electrophoresis uh, experiments of rapid products of Rolfia tetraphylla. Uh, these are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the randomly selected micro propagated plants. And this is the control one. And here you can see that uh, they all are showing monomorphic bending pattern. There is no variation. And therefore, we can conclude 
that the plants which are raised in tissue culture, they all were two to type. Uh, this uh, the same uh, the study was conducted in uh, Belenitis uh, egyptiaca and uh, uh, this also true you can see uh, the true bending patterns in the micro propagated and uh, mother plants uh, uh, the last uh, what i feel is that the genetic engineering would not be possible without the development of plant tissue Genetic engineering requires the generation of whole plants from single cells and efficient regeneration system are required for commercial success of genetically engineered products. Uh, uh, what uh, Professor uh, uh, <coughs> Kothari has explained, the genetic, I mean, the agrobacterium tumefaciens, you have to have an efficient regeneration protocol and therefore in collaboration with the uh, uh, tissue culture and genetic engineering, we could play a greater role in the crop improvement uh, program. Uh, what I could, in blue, uh, could conclude is that is a plant tissue culture is a multi-dimensional science that offers exciting prospects to future improvement to crop productivity. This is also an alternative method for production of useful and valuable secondary metabolites, which can be mentioned at various stages of growth and differentiation. In India, a large number of laboratories with a total capacity of production of more than 200 million plants per annum have been set up by entrepreneurs and technocrats. The commercial propagation in India has been a story of rise and fall and rise again. It is hoped that the micropropagation industry will also be an important commercial activity in the present century. Uh, these are uh, some of the research activities of my laboratory. Uh, we have uh, so far published around 220 papers and uh, books, uh, three uh, conferences, seminar. We have been regular participants. Uh, the PhD students, 25, have completed their uh, MPhil student, 10, and a postgraduate, of course. Books, which have a paper published by Springer, and uh, uh, in the two books, uh, uh, one on the trees, another is the general propagation of that. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, I want to show you that uh, it has been my endeavor always to encourage the students to uh, conduct uh, uh, their experiments. Uh, and uh, whenever they get uh, repeated experiments, uh, they send it for publication. So right from here, only this I have projected from 16, then 2017, and then 2018, and these are the 2019, and these 2020, and these are 2021. So uh, this has been our progress. Uh, I have uh, completed my tenure uh, from the Ali Muslim University, and uh, now I have been uh, busy in writing a book or something like that and ultimately whatever help I can do that. These are the, some of the research projects uh, which I have supervised. You can see it uh, right from uh, 2001 to 2004 to 2016 to 21. This is underway and shall be completed here. The UGC gave us 1 crore 47 lakhs of rupees. So these are all uh, experiments, I mean the what you call the projects uh, which were uh, supervised by me in the Department of Botany. And I have been able to establish a laboratory and molecular biology there for future students. But God knows what will happen when during this pandemic, this all has been logged and uh, students have not been able to reach the laboratories. So the government has to see that uh, how much they are interested to propagate the science in the country. So thank you very much for your uh, patient hearing. Uh, I may be excused if I have taken a little longer. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. In the interest of science, I don't think that you need to apologize because the amount of information that has been there in your presentation, I'm sure all the students would have taken down so much of notes 
and this would be a forerunner for them to carry out their experiments. Whatever doubts they have, they can always refer back to whatever you have shown, especially the consolidated papers that you have shown. I'm sure that will give a lot of insight for the students to take a look at those experiments and see where they have difficulties and move forward. Thank you so much for this elaborate presentation, sir, especially on the medicinal plants, wherein you looked into difficult species like Therocarpus marsupium, Thylophorus, Indicus, Raulpia serpentina, which are very important from the Indian systems of medicine perspective. Thank you so much once again. And now, um, as we come to the end of this session, we could take a look at the questions that have been asked by many of the participants. Uh, I would like to uh, read out a few of those questions, some of them addressed to Dr. Kothari and uh, some of them addressed to Dr. Anis. Uh, Dr. Kothari has marked here to one question by Mr. Innocent Sekau. He has asked, is gene editing or cisgenics a form of transgenic process? Uh, Professor Kothari, if you would like to answer that question, please, sir. Yeah. Uh Transgenic, as the name indicates, gene comes from other source. And in the cisgenic, same species genes are added. So this is the difference. And in the CRISPR case, genome editing, no external gene is added. The gene is edited from the resident genome. So that is gene editing is not transgenic. Cisgenic is also, truly speaking, not trust. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is another question by uh, a participant, Mitu Mohan. Sir, is there any sort of troubleshoot while considering CRISPR-Cas with plant tissue culture? Uh, what does it, the question mean, troubleshoot? Uh, maybe uh, the person would like to do tissue culture uh. and then from the, those uh, plants, he would like to go in for uh, CRISPR-Cas for uh, uh, working on the genes, maybe using the tissue cultured plants. For genome editing, tissue culture is not required for CRISPR-Cas, but uh, in tissue culture plant also, CRISPR-Cas can be used and normal plants also tissue culture can be used. Sir, thank you very much, sir. And uh, for the benefit of the participants, many of the questions Professor Kothari has directly given the reply on the chat. So whoever has posed questions, please look into the chat box also. Kothari, sir, thank you so much, sir. Thank and you. coming to uh, Professor Anis, sir, uh, a question to you. What is the efficiency of these artificial seeds to germinate in soil under natural environments? And what is the strategy to transport them to the site of farming? Anis, sir. Yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, the artificial seeds, uh, if you want to clone the plant, and we can prepare, say, the nodal segments, we can uh, encapsulate them. And under uh, in the cultural condition, we can uh, establish them as an individual plant. And the percentage proficiency has been recorded to be around 90% in the field conditions. So the main purpose of artificial seed is that suppose you have a, a hybrid plant where the seed production is very low. So those hybrid plants, they can be multiplied in tissue culture and can be encapsulated as an artificial seed and can be maintained in the culture. So that is the utility of this. Sir, uh, uh, Sudha Sahai would like to know how these artificial seeds can be directly germinated in the soil. Yes, yes, of course. They will be uh, rooted, uh, as, as, as I said, by making use of a root inducing medium and passing through hardening like normal tissue culture. They are transferred into a polycap cups containing the soil right that is what you call the sterile soil right and after hardening they are transferred to the greenhouse and from greenhouse to the natural sunlight so they will follow the same path isn't it so there is no i mean nothing i think uh, to be worried about that uh, the, the same pathway will give you the good establishment of these plants thank you sir 
I think um, I think these are the major questions that have been asked. Most of the questions are: Can we have a PDF of your uh, presentation? <laughs> for which we have uh, responded that it is streaming live on the YouTube, and so uh, the uh, whoever is interested can like take a look at those presentations and benefit from it. Okay. So uh, thank you so much, sirs, and I am also grateful to the organizers of. Uh, the university, the School of Life Sciences, for giving this opportunity for me to introduce these two distinguished uh, uh, personalities and to be a part of this webinar. Thank you so much once again. And I now pass on the uh, proceedings to Dr. Ankit Sudhir. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Um, as uh, on day one of our international webinar series, I would like to quote here some thankful words of Leo Tolstoy. Just as one candle light lights the another and can light thousands of other candles, so one heart illuminates another heart and can illuminate thousands of others. So I, on behalf of the entire fraternity of our university, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers who have spared their valuable time from their busy schedule to grace the occasion. I would also like to thank our moderator, Dr. Rekha Varier, for introducing our speakers to our participants and carrying out whole webinar smoothly. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, our afternoon session will start from 1 p.m. onwards on the same link. Right now, we are going for lunch break. Thanks all. Thank you all. Thank you.